Good morning, everyone. I'm TJ, and today I want to give you a jam lid challenge. That means you're going to use NX SOL 106 to optimize the function of a jam lid. Uh, you have probably opened a jam uh, glass uh, and um, noticed that when you remove the vacuum inside, you can snap the lid, so it gives us certain sound. And um, this is actually buckling in practice. And uh, we are going to optimize this uh, vacuum release function. And we will use not a particular jam lid. You're actually going to design it yourself, but I will give you some advices on how to design it to obtain the required function. In order to do so, you should probably study the patent behind this design. It's an American patent. And uh, then you're going to design and mesh the jam lid. And it's quite important that you make a cr nice mesh. And then you're going to use uh, two different simulations to obtain the vacuum release function. And you need to find out how much vacuum you have to apply in order to um, close the, the lid. And uh, let's have a look at the model. Here it's a sketch in NX. Uh, you can see the dimensions. And um, you don't need to use these dimensions, but they might give you a good start. However, feel free to try other designs. But in, before you do so, you should understand the patent, how it works. And of course, this is a symmetric model but the modes does not, do not need to be symmetric, so you have to really know about um, symmetric buckling and anti-symmetric buckling in order to put uh, the right uh, constraints on a quarter model or a half model. So be careful if you do so. Initially, I recommend you to use a full model. Here you can see the mesh. Uh, it's, the mesh size is quite small. Uh, for these dimensions, I've chosen an element size of 0.5 millimeters. And uh, that's the smallest elements in the center of this lid. And uh, on the outer edges, the element size is roughly 2 millimeters. And I've uh, chosen a shell uh, thickness of 0.1 millimeter. But this is just a guide. You can change, change these parameters. Uh, and uh, first, I wanted to uh, optimize the vacuum or find out how much vacuum that is needed in order to get a snap-through uh, behavior of the glass. Because what happens in practice is that uh, the, the manufacturer um, uh, entered hot jam in the glass and then closed the lid and then a vacuum um, occur and the glass or the lid will snap through. And um, uh, here you must remember to use uh, arc length control because you're applying pressure and uh, you might end up with some singularities. Uh, here you see the pressure represented by red arrows and uh, on the side here I've fully constrained the surface. And you can see the setups here. So here is uh, the results that you should obtain. Uh, here is an animation. And uh, this shows you how it snaps through. There it snaps. So that's the behavior you want to achieve when you apply vacuum. And uh, since you're applying load control, you need to use the arc length control as well to obtain the force displacement part, which looks like this. And you can see here that it's initially behave quite linear. Uh, then you see it reaches a limit one point, not only one limit point, but two limit points. And then it will have an unstable um, uh, displacement afterwards until it reaches a stable uh, displacement again. And uh, the, the stiffness is positive. So here you see you have actually two snap-through uh, behaviors. That's due to the design of the glass or the, 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 the lid I proposed. And then you see from the minimum point here and up, uh, you have a stable condition. The, 
the membrane stresses will increase the stiffness of the structure. So this is roughly how it should look like if you success successfully run the simulation with arc length control. But again, your design might be different and then the curve will look quite different as well. But it will take some time and uh, you need probably to use very small uh, increments in order to obtain this curve. Then, uh, when the glass is opened, uh, then you can use your finger to get this snap through uh, behavior. You press with the finger and uh, when you release it, it snaps back again. And um, uh, here you can see uh, that I've applied a um, uh, displacement and force displacement in the center of this lid. Uh, that means I'm actually not, um, I don't have to use arc length control. Um, on the side wall here, I uh, use a fixed surface or fully constrained surface. So let's see how that will um, behave. Here you see the, the snap through when you apply the enforced displacement in the center. And uh, the force response looked like this. Uh, first, a quite linear behavior, then it reaches a limit point, and you get an unstable behavior until it reaches a um, stable point again, and the stiffness becomes positive. If you're not using um, displacement control, which is stable because there is a unique solution for each incremental displacement added, and then you had to use uh, uh, arc length control. You could use arc length control here as well, of course. But otherwise, you will have a snap through behavior. So uh, you will have a singularity in this point, and the simulation will snap through to this stable condition again, and then increase the force. You can also notice that here I actually have almost a snapback behavior. Uh, that means uh, it's uh, the um, displacement control is almost singular in this region, and that's a challenge. So what you need to do now is to make a sketch, and then you have to apply one revolt command, and you're ready for the jar lid challenge. And feel free to de use these uh, dimensions or any other set of dimensions. But before you do so, um, you should learn about buckling. You know there are two kinds of buckling. You have the traditional buckling, uh, that means typically uh, when you apply an, an actual uh, compression force on a beam and uh, the displacement uh, is perpendicular to the applied force, that means no work is applied or done. And that's the classical buckling, but um, this jar lid challenge it means that you are doing another kind of buckling analysis, which is uh, this snap through uh, simulation. And this first video is uh, showing you how to uh, run a snap through simulation, where the applied load is uh, in the basically in the same direction as the instability or deformation. And here you f find a link to, to this uh, video. Uh, there is also another video showing cylindrical shell snapback, which is a more complex uh, behavior that needs uh, arc length control. So this video shows you how to use arc length control, while this one is applying displacement control. There are also a couple of other videos showing linear buckling, classical buckling, and another one which is showing nonlinear buckling with NXSOL 106. So I wish you good luck. Um, this is a nice challenge. Be prepared to spend some time. Uh, you won't succeed the first time, I guess, but it will be successful, I believe. Just start watching these videos. See you.